That's because people used to come through Shinogas every day. Yeah, this block, uh, words can't even explain. Man. Can't even explain. Hey, man, what's going on? Valley 05, where your money? Your money, man. They in the building. 600 boy LA man, LA Capone man, get to him man. Don't see two boys man. T Mark, two. Number nine man, number nine, shoot him, you hear me? You have to be willing to die or go to jail for a hundred years if that's the lane that you're stepping in. You have to understand that whether you're 15, 16, you gotta think like a man. You in oh, you're not? Uh, Why does everybody say you're only 16 years old? They say what they want to say. How old so, how old are you? 300. <laughs> the story of King Von, aka Grandson, Part 3. One of the first people King Von wrote to the day he was released from prison was none other than K.I. In the conversation, they had Von even mentioned that K.I. said that she was going to come see Von in jail, but that she never came. After that conversation, it really started to heat up between K.I. and King Von. K.I. started to mock J Money and King Von on Twitter by tweeting, How does it feel to lose your homie while being behind bars during that time? King Von responded by writing, Rest in piss P5 and Modell. Following this tweet from King Von, K.I. continued to write several disrespectful tweets about dead members from both 600 and Oblock. As I said earlier in part 2, King Von was under house arrest for 30 days, and Von seemed really desperate to get off the house arrest, he really wanted to go out on the streets again. He had lost two close friends while in prison, he was really hurt. Fuck both of the Jardels. Fuck too. Shakira taunting King Von on Twitter the same day he got out. She is talking about King Von losing J Money while he was locked up. King Von responds. Shakira keeps on taunting King Von with her tweets mocking J Money's death. On March 13, 2014, King Von was back on the streets again and started sliding again, just days after he got off house arrest. In March, King Von seemed to slide mostly with people like D-Rose, D-Roy and members from both THF 46 and Folly Boys such as Twilla and Coquilla. Based on his tweets, they often seemed to slide on 051 Young Money, to try to get revenge after the murder of L.A. Capone. And in the end, they succeeded, and they didn't just get anyone, they got 051's most famous member, the one who really put 051 on the map, the rapper Lil Mark.
On March 25, 2014, just three days before Lil Mark was shot to death, Lil Mark released his most famous and acclaimed song, No Competition which is a remix of Lil Durk's song Competition, featuring Lil Reese where he dissed Brick Squad, Wag the World and King Lil J. Lil Mark's remix of the song was an even more disrespectful song in which he mocked several deceased members from 600, Lam Ron and a block such as L.A. Capone, Daisky, O.D., Baldy, Trix, Lil Rob and D-Thang. This song was of course a big part of why he was killed. It was no coincidence that he was killed just three days after the song was released. Though Lil Mark was not only rapper, he was one of 051's top members and was rumored to have killed Stefan from Welch World in 2006, when he was only 12 years old. The song that Lil Mark released got a lot of attention in Chicago and many got angry and he made himself a big target. Because neither 600, O'Block nor THF 46 could kill those responsible for L.A. Capone's death, because they were in prison and because they never managed to catch either Melly or Kiddo who were also on top of the list for the BDs, Lil Mark became their highest priority instead, a rapper for a rapper, or as Lil Durk said in the song 1773 Vulture, if we can't find you, we going to kill your artist. On March 28, 2014, Lil Mark would tragically suffer the same fate as his brother Tuka, be shot and killed at a bus stop. The question is why Lil Mark was standing there that day, because two days before he was close to getting caught at the exact same bus stop, by basically the same people who would catch him exactly two days later. That day, Lil Mark escaped with a hair's breadth after King Bun from a block, Twilla and Rome from THF 46 almost put him away for good. Two days later, Lil Mark sadly did not have the same luck. As I said, two days later they sadly caught Lil Mark for real. Mark was standing at a bus stop at 1.27 p.m. on the 300 block of East 51st Street. Some members of Lexville spotted Lil Mark at the bus stop, and gave THF 46 the location. THF 46, who was already in traffic with members from Folly Boys, 600 and O Block, immediately got on it and drove to the location and spotted him. The people who were in the car were allegedly Twila from THF 46, D Rose from 600, Five Star from Folly Boys and T Roy and King Bun from a block. They pulled up next to the bus stop and Twila allegedly jumped out at the minivan and started shooting at Lil Mark, with the gun equipped with extended mags. Meanwhile, King Bun and D Rose allegedly shot from inside the silver minivan. Lil Mark started running immediately as the van pulled up. The first couple of shots shattered the glass at the bus stop, but the other shots hit Lil Mark in the head. They then sped away from the scene and fled north and then west. The minivan, which actually belonged to D. Rose, was later found in flames about 6.30 p.m. in the 3700 block of South Ellis Avenue. Several shell casings from different guns were recovered on the scene and a witness to the shooting said he saw one man jumping out of the van and began firing shots at the man who stood at the bus stop. Ding ring bells, free you, beat 12, nigga fuck 12, on the block nigga like it ain't shit, I don't tip nigga all of my crib, all of my dick and niggas do Whose bullets actually hit is impossible to know, 
All three who have been singled out as the alleged shooters have basically credited themselves with the body. Just hours after the murder, D. Rose tweeted, I'm going in, ain't gotta ask who shot him, along with, Marco what I'm smoking on, Marco Pack. King Von tweeted, smoke up, now we're back at it, along with a couple of DIY tweets, and a tweet indicating that he was one of the people who let off shots. King Von have also mocked Lil Mark several times throughout his rap career, one time where he said, caught that boy right by the bus, this is his last stop. Twilla has also mocked Lil Mark multiple times, one of which was when he went back to the location where Lil Mark was killed and posed for a photo. What is even more shocking is that just hours after the murder, D. Rose, D. Roy and King Von went back to the crime scene to film and mock Lil Mark. The body was no longer there but still, the disrespect had no limits. Body down. Body down. 51st. Gang. It was really hot out on the streets after the murder of Lil Mark. Both DHF, 6 U and O Block were shot up, and 051 would eventually get their revenge. Melly was locked up while Lil Mark got killed. But once he got out he started to terrorize Lil Durk and THF 46. But that's a whole other story that you can learn about in the story of 051 Melly. Either way, King Von kept on sliding even though he released that things were really starting to get real out there, he knew people were desperate to get him. But he kept on sliding. He thought that as long as he kept sliding, there is a less chance that he would get caught lacking which actually worked for him. Von was damn nearly out in traffic every day, he was really a big factor in the streets. However, King Von wasn't planning on stopping, as he said to his sister while he was in jail 2013, when I get out I'm just going to kill people, which he allegedly ended up doing. Now he had revenge for L.A. Capone, but he had another friend who was shot dead while he was in prison, Jay Money. Just like I mentioned in part 2. J Money was shot to death by Lil B and none other than K.I. herself. However, just one day after the murder of Lil Mark, Lil B was killed, though not by an enemy, he was shot dead by police after allegedly pointing a 40 caliber gun at them. Now, Vaughn's focus shifted to K.I. who also was rumored to be one of the killers, and who was constantly mocking J Money on social media and bragging that she was there. 17 days after the murder of Lil Mark, the famous story between King Bun and K.I. would come to an end. But before we get to the end of their story, there is one more to tell before we get to the murder of K.I., and it is of course the murder of Blood Money, which many people think triggered the assassination of K.I., only two days later. Of course, I'm talking about the murder of Chief Keef's cousin, Blood Money, where K.I. was rumored to be one of the alleged shooters, which FBG Butter later confirmed after her death along with a couple of other murders. K.I. was totally heartbroken after one of her best friends Race and Lil B. Shaw was murdered by the police, she was angry and was ready to catch another body, whether it was someone from TYMB, a block, 600 or even a police officer, she did not care, it all ended up with her, Scrap and Bebe from Mob, Catching Blood Money and his cousin lacking about 9.45pm near where he grew up at 56th and Elizabeth Streets. 
Police said there were so many shell casings on the scene, that they had to use index cards as evidence markers. Blood money was struck by multiple bullets all over his body, and his 33-year-old cousin was hit in the stomach. They both were rushed to the hospital. Blood Money, whose real name was Mario Hess, was tragically pronounced dead at Stroger Hospital. His 33 years old cousin however, luckily survived the shooting. The day after the murder, K.I. took it to Twitter and wrote several subliminal tweets about her involvement in the shooting. Among other things, she tweeted, R.I.P. Boss Trail and Lil B, along with, set the city on fire for Lil B. Later, FBG Butta also basically confirmed all her bodies, one of them being Blood Money. Immediately after her death, there were also many who wrote Rest in Peace Blood Money, one of them was King Vaughn. It's one thing I just want to clear up, before we move on with the story. It has long been rumored that it was Killa K.I. from Mob who was on the hit, and that people got him confused with K.I. That rumor is wrong. Killa K.I. was locked up for not wearing a seatbelt during that hit, probably because of his warrant. So that rumor is completely false. K.I. was totally heartbroken after the murder of Lil B. And something that made her even angrier was when D. Rose referred to him as Lil Bitch. This made her go out looking for him, but on her own. An officer who was familiar with her but actually was cordial with her, caught her wandering towards King Drive by herself. The officer advised her to go back home, because it was dangerous, but she politely refused and walked away. Days later, she was shot and killed while walking with FBG Butta and Spoon from STL slash EBT, right by the gun line between a block and STL slash EBT. Now we have come to the end, not the end of the story of King Von, but the end of the relationship that King Von had deliberately built between him and K.I. From the beginning, Many speculated or even believed that his interest in her was for real, but lately it has come out that it was not real at all, which for me and many others was pretty obvious. Ocho Manova Block, for example, said in one of his videos that you must be stupid if you think King Von liked K.I. for real. King Von built this relationship in an attempt to set up K.I., their beef was extremely personal and had been going on for years. He really wanted her gone, and she wanted him gone. However, K.I. was smart, she understood what King Bun was trying to do. On April 11, 2014, just two days after the murder of Blood Money, K.I.'s life would tragically come to an end, and King Von would allegedly catch his sixth body, or seventh if you want to count Lil Mark. On April 11, 2014, K.I., Butta and Spoon were on their way to Wooski to celebrate Boss Trail's birthday. They were later planning to go lurk on a block, to get revenge for Boss Trail's death. Meanwhile, King Von, Big A, D-Roy and Boss Money were about to leave the O-Block housing complex, because D-Roy was going to turn himself into the police for some reason. At 6.36pm, K.I. went on Twitter, tweeting her location. Von and the others saw the tweet. As soon as they left O'Block's exit they spotted them, K.I., F.B.G. Bud and Spoon. 
This was a golden opportunity they could not afford to miss. Big A and T-Roy had already missed once a little less than a year before, when they shot at her but missed. Instead, Billy, quiet money, was killed in the crossfire. Now they got their chance to get back for OD, J money and blood money. King Von was allegedly the first to jump out of the car and start shooting up all three. Because of Von and K.I.'s beef being so personal, Von wanted to be the one who got her. Just like he indicated in the unreleased song Wait where he said, I was sliding with Big A, we were riding down the tray. I hit the alley told bro wait, you know King Von do his thing. I hopped out, no, I don't play, 9 Beretta on my waist, I count the crowd, didn't hesitate. Von and Big A, hopped out and struck K.I. with multiple bullets, hitting her in the stomach and face. Spoon and Butter, who both were shot, luckily got away while K.I., bleeding from her stomach, face and neck, walked to a nearby porch where she collapsed and lost consciousness. K.I. was shot nine times in total. Immediately they all bailed out, and later drove to drop off D-Roy at the police station. This is one of the most famous hits in Chicago's history. After the murder, K.I. pretty soon attracted worldwide attention after several reports on her story as a cold-blooded killer. Many of the reports incorrectly claimed that she was involved in over 17 murders. In recent times, she has become even more famous through documentaries, videos on YouTube, and in songs where she has both been praised and mocked. The mocking towards K.I. reigned in on social media after the murder, especially from the alleged murderers, King Von and Big A. King Von was also mentioned as a super savage by, among others, Lil Reese, Boss Top and Boss CJ, just days after the murder. People killed my homie, and I made them feel it. Put your brains in your lap, you wasn't thinking anyway. Stretch gang. Rest in piss Lil B. I'm King Von from a block, and I run shit. R.I.P. Blood Money. Man who is Snoop because I wanted to get real disrespectful if it is a dead op.
Yeah, Kyra right now, man. I'm gonna go get some more. This is my daughter right here. This is my daughter, Kyra. It's my daughter. He said my daughter, Kyra. It's my daughter now. She kissed her now. My daughter, Kyra. Hey, Kyra. Hey. You are crazy. She just felt like he was trying to set her up and kill her. That's what she told me. She like, I think he just trying to kill me. He don't like me. What's the life? Boy, back right now. Boy, Boy you ain't getting that. I'm playing with my knees. I'm letting you know. You, you know how I play out here. Don't you don't come with that money, shorty. Boy, come up and do miss it. You talking? You don't know who I am? Tim, stop playing with her. You know who I am? I know my baby. You scared of the, um, you scared of the dark? I'm the one of those type of guys that be in the dark waiting for you when you, when you gotta go pee at night. I and I just get you, and you don't never come back to your parents again. No, you're not going. You hear me? Then your TT ain't gonna be able to save you. Your daddy, he gonna be crying someone like, man, she don't got nothing to do with me. Just take The 4chan user who hacked Jakara's Twitter page a few years ago and leaked all those DMs in 2016 to be precise. You can still read the post on the website. He said he was going to leave her page after he seen those DMs between King Bun and K.I. that you all saw in part 2. But then he saw a DM that her friend sent to her. Jakira's friend, I wish you could reply back. The hacker then asked her if he could ask her one question. She said, as long as you're not disrespectful. And he said, who do you think killed her? She said, I don't feel comfortable answering. And then the hacker told her it's okay, and that he was gonna log out. And then she said, King Von did it. After King Von's death, it was again confirmed when several members said RIP to KI on social media, just hours after Von was killed, one of the members who wrote it was none other than Dutchie from STL slash EBT. Jakira's mother also updated her profile photo on Facebook, to a picture of Jakira and received several comments from. Among others, FBG Duck's mother, that Jakira can finally rest in peace now. King Von has also recently rapped about the K.I. murder in a few songs. King Von, Grandson. Vernon that's a one way, hop out sparking broad day, try to run, get caught, that bitch got hit, that hoe was in the way, a block, we run the city, rest in peace Big A. King Von, wait. I was sliding with Big A, we was riding down the tray, I hit the alley, told bro wait, you know King Von do his thing. I hopped out. No, I don't play. King Von, exposing me featuring Memo. I swear I killed her, broke her back. King Von, war with us. Put a pretty op bitch in the morgue, huh? Call that bitch drop dead gorgeous, damn. The following week after the murder, Wooski from STL slash EBD rode with people like King Lil J and FBG Butta, who got in the leg on the hit, and shot up O Block several times that week, and the week after that, and even managed to get back on O Block. You see, after the death of KI, Taekwon World pretty much became its own set, and the shorties started putting in real work. On April 25th, 2014, just 14 days after the murder of KI, Taekwon World caught their first body from a block, with help from STL slash EBT. It is rumored that Lil Tuan from Taekwon World, who King Von gave a leg shot in 2012, was out looking to get back for KI together with Can't Get Right from STL slash EBT, who stood very close to KI. They spotted Lil Sam from a block and killed him. Lil Sam was not a known member from a block, 
and I did not manage to find any article or info on him at all. Taekwon World and STL slash EBT continued to shoot up O Block the rest of the month, and soon, the shorties from Taekwon World would start putting in work for real on O Block, which we will come to later on in the story. After this, King Von kept sliding back to back just like he used to, 80% of his tweets are about being in traffic, and riding through the enemy's neighborhood and shooting it up. Von never really stopped, he was out there nearly every day. In early May, 2014, he got his iconic O-Block tattoo on his chest, with the names of fallen members from O-Block written on there as well. White White, Patoon, J Money and Sheroid. O-Block really meant everything to him, and did, until the very end. On May 5, 2014, King Von and other members of a block got into a fight with several members from Jaro City. One of the members who took part in the fight was Hari from Jaro City, who King Von apparently beat up in the fight. Von took it quite quickly to Twitter and laughed about it, and even wrote to Hari to mock him. Now we come to an unknown part of the story, where King Von was actually close to losing his life. On May 13, 2014, King Von was involved in a car accident on the freeway. Apparently the car was traveling at high speed when the driver lost control, which resulted in the car flipping over, and rolling over a few times. King Von was apparently in the car with another friend, I do not know who drove the car. Both were quickly taken to the hospital in unknown condition, but probably not seriously injured as King Von was able to leave the hospital two days later. However, he himself mentioned on Twitter that his whole body hurt, and that he could barely move due to injuries to his back and arm. His friend condition was unknown but I think it's safe to say that he survived, because Von would have mentioned it if he died. Two weeks after the car accident, the most notable event in King Von's past, that most fans know about, took place. Of course, I'm talking about the murder of Malcolm Stuckey, and the two attempted murders of two of his friends. On May 29, 2014, King Von was at a house party, on the 5700 block of South LaSalle Street. At the party it was mixed with people who were BDs and people who were GDs from smaller sets around the south side. It is unclear who King Von was there with, but there are many indications that he was there with girls, and did not have anyone with him from his side, according to preliminary investigations. The party seemed to be like any other party, but that would turn out to be wrong, because the whole party ended in one big tragedy. 
It all started with glances between people, mainly between Malcolm and King Vaughn, where Malcolm is said to have stared at him angrily. King Vaughn, who probably felt threatened, immediately left the party and returned home to Parkway Gardens. However, King Vaughn did not go there to stay, he went there, picked up his friend Big Mike from a block and then headed back to the party 45 minutes later together with Mike. They parked their car in an alley near the house and walked to the front of the house. Malcolm was standing on the porch with two of his friends. King Vaughn and Big Mike then allegedly ran up in front of the porch, pulled out their guns, and literally started spraying bullets at the people on the porch. Malcolm got struck with bullets to his head, his friends who were standing next to him also got shot. One of them got shot in the mouth and right leg, and the other one in the foot. Malcolm was tragically pronounced dead on the scene. His friend who was shot in the mouth and leg was rushed to John H. Stroger Hospital of Cook County in serious condition, luckily he survived. His friend who was shot in the foot was able to get to St. Bernard Hospital in good condition, and could soon leave the hospital. The reason this event is so famous, is because King Vaughn and Big Mike ended up getting charged with the murder and the two attempts. However, they were not arrested a few days afterwards, as many have wrongly claimed. They were arrested for it two months after the murder according to the Chicago Police Department's own website. However, there is something that doesn't add up, and I will soon tell you why, but before I do, I will tell you about an internal beef that took place between a block's click. Glock Boy slash Stretch Gang and Glow Gang. Glock Boy slash Stretch Gang was a small clique within a block that consisted of people like King Vaughn, D Roy, Boss Top, Big A, D Rose, Edog, J Money, and a few more. Basically, all the top members from a block. Glow Gang consisted of people like Chief Geef, Tato, Ballout, and Capo from No Limit. There had long been tension between the two groups as one group made an extreme amount of money while the other group was responsible for over 20 murders, which they and Glow Gang rapped about as if they were the ones responsible for it. It started with several subtle insults from Stretch Gang towards Glow Gang, that they are lames who rap, but are soft in real life. It got only worse from there and more gangs got in the mix, such as THF 46, Lamron and Front Street. It all culminated after Lil Durk got locked up in 2013 for over a month, on a $10,000 bond. Chief Keefe said he would bond him out, but when Vaughn and the others asked for the bond money, Keefe instead bragged about how much money he spent on clothes and jewelry, and ignored to bond Lil Durk out. This resulted in Boss Top breaking into Chief Keefe's house and taking his chain, as well as OJ from Lamron robbing Capo for his chain which King Vaughn later mocked Keefe and Capo for on Twitter. This led to a number of different events that created further fragmentation between the group. For example, NLMB took revenge on Lamron when Wet M Up and G Maneski robbed and beat up Rex from Lamron. Capo was later also robbed by Roman Zoo from THF 46, which actually resulted in Capo shooting up THF 46 together with Benji from Glow Gang.
The only thing folks took was folks' chains, you know what I'm saying? And the only reason folks took folks' chains because the nigga lied and said, you get some money from my homie Bond, right? Like, say we call him, we call him, nigga. And we asked him for some money and shit, and he said he gonna give it to him, right? So we said, we say our homie booked the shit, his bond 25,000. We got 18,000, we need 75 more hundred, right? So the nigga said, he said, oh yeah, that's all y'all need, woo. I just spent that shit on shoes, woo. We, all right, 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 right. Why you say it like that, though? Now we call him again, like a week later or something. Like, Damn, what's up with that money, gang? Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you know, we're trying to get folks out. Vine. Yeah, how much I need? We need, we need 7,500 and shit. Vine. Whoa, whoa. Now, this is a minute ago. I can't turn on. So now I get that. Folks get that. What do you say? Yeah, yeah, 7,500. I just do that shit in the club and shit. Whoa. So motherfuckers see folks. I'm going to take folks' chain off his neck and shit. I'm going to take folks' shit. So go get the bomb money. I'm a fan. I don't know. I don't know where the clothes and all that other shit came from. Like, you know, that's, that's just how people, like, with, with clout and shit, try to make other people seem bogus and shit or whatever. What? But it's really over some real what? shit, and nigga be out like a real hoe. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking to nobody. W in your signature. Yeah. W so y'all can say folks took folks' chain. Then we go try to, you know? And I ain't try to get us no money for it. So we still couldn't even bomb folks up. But the damn did it already. It is what it is. No for no time. Once Lil Dirk got out of jail, he took it to Twitter and made it clear that Chief Keef can't come back to a block, and even clowned him for being rich and not bailing D Rose out, who Keef mentioned in a few songs. Lil Dirk then appeared in a video in June 2014, with Keef and Capo's chains. Mocking them. Boss Top then crossed all lines, which may be the reason why their relationship has never really healed, when he posted, sipping on blood money, on Instagram. The post was quickly deleted, but many had already seen it. Chief Keef then responded with, I would say fuck OD, but that's my boy. During this time, GBE was mainly beefing with Migos, where Frito Santana tweeted the iconic tweets towards Migos, threatening to kill their whole crew. Chief Keef claimed that Migos can't come to Chicago, that they are not welcome there. But Lil Durk then stepped in, and said that Migos can come to a block and shoot a music video with him. Dirk really wanted to show his power he had here, he had the streets behind him. Lamron had his back, THF 46 had his back, O'Block had his back, and 600 had his back. So Lil Durk took Migos' side, and Sosa later took Tyga and the game side, in their beef with Dirk. Dirk's beef with Tyga and the game ended pretty quickly, after Varney and Dirk threatened the game in the club, and Tyga pretty much fled the country, and the beef eventually died out. Dirk and Chief Keith then squashed their beef in August 2014, and have joked together on social media many times, but have never made any music together after their beef. However, the beef was manly squashed between the rappers, it was still heavy tension between the groups. Say fuck all D, but that's my boy. You feel me? I'm from there. You know? Fuck. Oh, bro. Now back to history, after the murder of Malcolm, 
King Von was still out on the streets. Just six days after the murder, King Von tweeted that he was going on a murder spree. However, he never had time to do so, but he shot at people and ended up getting locked up in connection with the situation. Like I said many times before, King Von never chilled. He was out sliding damn near every day, and really went all in. On June 7, 2014, it was time for King Von's prom. Now comes a really crazy story. Allegedly, King Von was out in traffic on their way to get ready for prom, with Lil Dirk's watch on his wrist, together with Mina Red, and Varney from Lamron. On the way, King Von and the others allegedly got spotted by people on mob territory, where they are said to have shouted something at King Von and the others in the car. It is rumored that King Von and Varney then hopped out of the car, with suits on, and started shooting at them, but not hitting any of them. King Von and Mina then went off to prom, where King Von is said to have had his gun with him. Once at the prom, beef occurred between King Von and other people. A few hours later, Varney, Mina Red and King Von got locked up. King Von for destruction of property, and Mina Red for a gun which was not hers, but she took the case for him. King Von actually told this story in the song, Don't Wanna Be Me, where he said, Now me and Varney slide, got a bitch in the car, she just driving, we hop out, we were blasting and wilding, guns so loud we ain't hearing the sirens, but 12 Nam was coming, we ain't talking, no time for discussion, took a case, man that girl was a hunted. Mina Red, who is Tay 600's sister, was in a relationship with King Bun during this time. Apparently there was a girl from 051 Young Money who snitched on King Von, Mina and Varney in connection with this situation, the girl is said to be named Jerica. Now, we come to the part where it was a thing that didn't add up to me. Just like I said before, King Von got locked up on the 7th of June 2014. According to the police website, he was released the next day. Here comes the strange thing. King Von wrote his last tweet the day he got locked up on the 7th of June. There are no more tweets from him until he was released in December 2017. According to the police website, King Von was arrested for the murder of Malcolm and the two attempts on July 22, 2014, about a month and a half after it is said that he was released on June 8. This means that King Von must have been locked up from June 7 for destroying property, where he is alleged to have been released the next day, until he was arrested on 2650 South California Avenue, which is the address for Cook County Jail, for the murder of Malcolm and the two attempted murders. This is really weird as there are no tweets from him between those dates, which must mean that they held him locked up for some reason until he got charged with the murder. Anyway, Big Mike got arrested and charged with the murder in two attempts on July 20th, 2014, and King Von was charged two days later. The police investigation became very long and protracted, it took a long time before the trial started, 
because it took over a year for the prosecutors to even find the murder weapon that later could not be linked to King Von. In questioning with the police, Big Mike is said to have snitched on King Von, where he is said to have admitted that he himself fired shots, but that it was King Von who did the killing. Meanwhile, King Von did not say a word to the police during the entire investigation. King Von was smart, he knew that the police would get a much more difficult investigation if he did not say anything, and also could not use his words against him. However, he was still in big trouble because of Big Mike snitching on him and signing a deal with the police. Luckily for King Von, Big Mike would make a last minute change, which would eventually set him free. After spending three and a half years in prison waiting for the investigation to be completed, the trial, which lasted five days, finally began. Just like I mentioned earlier, King Von was acquitted of all charges, and this was because Big Mike, for some reason, pulled out of the deal which resulted in him being found guilty of aggravated battery with a firearm, which gave him 16 years in prison. But Big Mike also received an additional 12-year sentence, for backing out of a deal to testify against a co-defendant, which resulted in him being sentenced to 28 years in prison. King Vaughn has mentioned this incident in several songs where he has, among other things, mocked Big Mike, calling him a snitch and other mocking comments towards him. However, in the song, What's Next, by Jizzle Bucks, which King Vaughn featured on, he basically said that a witness was killed during the investigation when he said, But I ain't tell nobody that I do not condone and snitching, a dude told on me before, he got a longer sentence, I think they gave him 28, he rather talk than listen, dude was the only one that told, they killed the other witness. It's really scary if it's true, however, I have no information about it, and have not heard of it from anyone else. However, King Von is quite famous for telling the truth in his songs, which may indicate a certain truth. In an interview with DJ Small's Eyes, King Von says that he could not hold back his tears when the judge told him that he was acquitted of all charges, which you can really understand because King Von was facing over a hundred years in prison. Reactions from members when King Von got out. For all of you who have seen the story of Get Back Gang, know how much a block suffered during the time King Bun was locked up. When you look at the actual facts, you see that when King Bun was out on the streets, a block dropped body after body on their rival gangs, but when King Von was locked up, they lost a couple of members. The only member killed from a block while King Bun was out on the streets is White White from a block, whom King Bun later avenged. 
King Von really did suffer in prison. Imagine being locked up with the knowledge that even your friends can be killed any day, it must be a pure nightmare. I will now go through the murders of the members of a block during the time King Von was locked up briefly. If you want more detailed info you can watch the story of Get Back Gang. The first loss came on July 17, 2016, when Cheno got killed by Poppy from Taekwon World and Can't Get Right from STL slash EBT. On December 4, 2016, it was time again when one of King Von's closest friends was killed, Big A. Big A was allegedly killed by KI's big brother G.I. Joe, and can't get right from STL slash EBT. So this was one of Vaughn's closest friends that he lost, this loss really hit him bad. Only two months later, King Vaughn's absolute best friend, D-Roy, got killed on Valentine's Day by TB from Taekwon World. The one who got DB the drop on T-Roy was none other than FBG Brick from STL slash EBT. These murders resulted in Get Back Gang being formed, with top members from a block and 600, who started dropping body after body on King Von's command. However, King Von would lose another friend just days before he was released, D-Roy's little brother HK who was allegedly killed by Wooski from STL slash EBT, and Skinny from Jaro City. Just as you all know, D-Roy and King Von were best friends, they were like brothers, and I'm not talking about them being similar in appearance. They were around each other every day, stood up for each other in every situation, and saw themselves as one of the most deadliest duos in the city. It is rumored that they caught multiple bodies together, including Modell, Boss Trell and KI, all from STL slash EBT. When those two slipped together, it almost always ended in someone shot or in worst case killed. They took out killer after killer, even though a block was outnumbered by Jaro, Mob and STL slash EBT. Those two were basically the ones who carried a block in times when STL slash EBT and Jaro passed out a lot of smoke. They were a block go to shooters when the block needed them the most. What many people seem to forget after Von became a rapper is that Von, together with D-Roy, were the most feared member from a block, STL and Jaro was desperate to get them and like I said, on Valentine's Day in 2017, they got T-Roy out the way for good. Last time I talked about D-Roy and King Von, I compared his death with the scenario, think of it as if King Von had been killed today. It had that impact. Now King Von is back together with his best friend. Motherfucker run up on me, I will shoot you. No problem. I will fucking shoot you. Yes, I will. So if you see me, it ain't no shit. Leave me the fuck alone. Now, they on here talking about what you think about T-Roy getting popped. <laughs> Damn, T-Roy got popped? When did that happen? When did T-Roy get popped? Hey. Damn, somebody popped him. Is he dead? Is he dead? Did, did he die? Damn, merch that they popped T-Roy. It must don't be, it ain't, it must ain't that important shit. It ain't all over the internet. I ain't see shit. He must not be dead.
Just like out on the streets, King Von was totally fearless in jail. When he had beef with somebody in jail, it was really on sight, no talking. Just straight going up to people and fighting them, just like he did to Quando Rondo. Even P. Rico from Brick Squad gave Von credit for not running in jail, and for always standing his ground. Once and for all, I'll also put an end to the myth that King Von is King David's grandson, he's not. King Von got the nickname grandson in jail from an old head, who started calling him that because of how Von carried himself, and for being completely fearless in jail. This really shows the type of mentality King Von had, he was really about it, both inside and outside of jail. Take Upon said in a live stream on YouTube, that King Von did not care about going to jail, and that was the reason why King Von could be the person he actually was. Take Upon said that King Von had over 20 fights in jail while fighting his murder, and even though Von is not the biggest guy, he really beat up people, he was good at fighting. Tay also said that Von would smoke you in broad daylight in front of 50 people without caring. He did not care about going to jail because he was comfortable in that environment. Mm-mm. He telling me and said that him and Von, him and Von was like, because he folks was fighting some shit too. He wasn't fighting, I think he was fighting like a bitch or something. So on King Day, folks in that bitch, him and Von was rocking out all the time at court. Him and Von stayed running to each other. So he telling me, and she's like, yeah, boy, Von just did this to um, Yeah, did he win? He what? Did he win? You feel me? Because, you know, I'm like, you know, I ain't seen folks in years. But when he was out, we was whooping niggas in the world, though. Folks going on the ops, whooping niggas in sharks and shit. But, you know, in a county, like, these niggas be, like, in, they, in, in this bitch, too. You ain't the only fucking county big motherfucker fighting body in this motherfucker. And you ain't even big. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's niggas in this bitch walking that bitch. You be scared. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> They walk in this business. He been in this business five years. He a vice lord from out west. He just beat motherfuckers. He fighting a quadruple homie. You don't get no fuck. He beating. He beating out south ass, up north ass. He beating all ass. You damn. Let me just get away from buddy. <laughs> he and that bitch. He take. He got his motherfucker. Uh, doc off. He and that bitch and this motherfucker. Long john. Long john. Long sleeve. Come on, bro. It's your shirt back on, man. <laughs> My son, like real life. That's why I can say Von Von had over 20 fights in that bitch. He was whoosh, 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 whoosh. I'm talking about quick. You know, folks like folks, I'm, I'm telling y'all, y'all, y'all can see. I was speaking about this shit in the interview with 16. Like, Von didn't even treat jail like some shit, but he had to become a different nigga. Like, how he talk about jail, he talk about that shit like it's a rite of passage. Like every nigga that was a street nigga like him, he was like, jail was coming. And he and that's how he addressed jail. That's why he was always in that bitch because he never cared about jail. That's how he was able to be the type of nigga he was in the streets. Cause some of these savages, like, and you supposed to, you supposed to do shit with that in the back of your mind, like knowing, like, man, this shit go south, motherfucker go to jail. Well, shorty sliding up on motherfucker like the police don't even exist. He will smoke you broad day. He will smoke your ass in front of fifty motherfuckers, boy. Don't fuck them. He don't get no fuck. Shorty ass to do you. I'm to my honest saying, folks try to do shit on the band. I'm talking about walk right up on the motherfucker on, on, on the GPS monitor. The fuck is you up? <laughs> but he didn't get no fuck. Like he, bro, jail ain't j- jail wasn't jail wasn't. He, that was like a rite of passage. Like even when he was fighting his jail shit, he didn't think he was going down. He was like, bro, I'm coming home, bro. I don't get no fuck about sending this bitch four years and beating all the ops and going to the hole. Like he don't get no fuck. <laughs> As soon as he catch up, he beating their ass. I don't give no fuck. He no tolerance. That's exactly why it's like when he come home, you just gotta go with what folks say. Cause it's like he was just in jail three and a half years. Never gave a pass out. Never saved the op ass cause he was scared or never just didn't beat the op ass for a reason. Like every op he came across, woo, boom, bop, bing, bing, crossing him. He going to say it. He catch an op and said, beat him. They let him out of the cell with an op. And Seg, where the fuck you go after you fight? You went to Seg for fighting, and you go to Seg and you fight. Where the fuck you going at? <laughs> where the fuck we put you? Shit, you fighting in here? You fighting in pop? Like what? You just a fighter. Right, you just a fighter. Shit. Yeah, put his ass back on the pod, bro, because he fighting in Seg. He throwing shit at people and shit, folks. And this bitch. Let him do his time. Man, let him do his time, bro. 
Folks, cause he fighting shit. Folks fighting in sick. He fighting on the deck. He fighting at court. He fighting on the yard. Folks says fight. I ain't gonna lie, I was in the county six months. That's all I heard in that bitch. He and that bitch crushing motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, folks losing his top. Folks over there nine beating the shit out of people. And my son, it's like so. But these, there's a lot of niggas that's not that. Like these niggas was in jail, straight hoes. Came back in the world, did some shit, did shit before they went, in, and they just be holding that shit. But on some real shit though, he was a disrespectful ass. Ah, but I like him though. I ain't gonna lie to you, on Joseph. On oh, phone now. Y'all happy now? I just told y'all what I told y'all. Now what the fuck? Fuck else you want from me? <laughs> fuck. That shit was weird, man. That's weird ass energy, man. Dirty ass, goofy ass energy, man. Come on, man. That dirty ass shit. I bet Vaughn ain't ever ran on none of his guys. On Joseph, I bet he didn't. Every time it's time to fight, that nigga was fighting on Joseph. Even in jail when we was in that bitch, on my daughter. That man was front center like, on Joseph like. He ain't never ran on nobody. I never saw that man run on nobody, man. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. When Joseph come, he could talk that sh He was talking that shit like, he meant that shit like, he ain't run on his guys on no fighting in jail, none of that shit. Like, when I saw him in real life, that nigga took off his DLC, ready to fight on Joseph. Like, on Joseph coming, boy. Like, he ain't never run on nobody. Like, I, that's why I respect him. Because that man, when he was ready, when we was in the bullpen on Joseph, I'm what the fuck? But he getting that, nah, we gonna fall back type shit, you know? Um, yeah. So I'm like, oh, that's what he on type shit. Then you see, I was in there with my homie, and them. He was in there with his his homie. This one, Waldo was alive, y'all, Joseph. Waldo was a smooth dude, too. Sorry, that shit happened to him. But he was a smooth dude, too, on front of him. Yeah, we came right up in the bullpen. And that nigga Manny, that nigga Manny from 600, he was up, he was up in there. No, nah, no, nah, that's his name, Manny. Yeah, he a who? On front of him, he was up in that bitch on just. Come on, man. He know what's going on. That's why I respect him. He ain't never run on nobody, though. He remind me of myself. And he a Leo. Full no. When it was clear that King Bun would be released, he had a conversation with none other than Melly from 051 Young Money. Melly is said to have said, I knew you would be released, you lost your best friend, God are you that. This really shows how much respect Vaughn and T-Roy had from enemies around the city. Yo, I mean, I'm gonna figure this shit out, just be cool out there. I call folks, I call folks, it's like, this sound like Valentine's Day, you see what I'm saying? I call folks and shit, I'm calling, I call, I call. Now, I call my mama, I call my mama. My mama call. Now, uh, now, nah, nah, nah. now, we, now we try to call T-Rush and Aunt. Yeah, we try to call T-Rush and Aunt. Uh, I right, win, 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 win. Nah, 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 ah. What I do? All right, all right, I call somebody, I probably call a hoe or something. I call a Zarya, so I call a bitch or something, I call a hoe. Then, win, I call my mama back. Now she crying and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? What you crying for? You good? You know what I'm saying? She, ooh, they shot T Roy. T Roy got. Now what? Ooh, what? Look oh, at the phone. You know how that shit go. You in jail? You can tell. Hold on. What? Ah, all right. Uh. Now we calling. We calling. We calling. Right? What's going on? What's going on? He got hit. He got hit. He got hit once. I'm sure. Oh, damn, 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 damn. What the fuck going on out there? I'm T-Roy, got shot, look, look, this is the thing, y'all don't know T-Roy. Y'all got to leave our history of T-Roy, y'all don't know. No, uh, T-Roy got to go for the, that's T-Roy. T-Roy, that's T-Roy, oh, oh, you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't know T-Roy like I know T-Roy, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so when I hear he get shot, on. the fuck he? He don't want to talk me like, don't be lacking, oh, don't be, oh, don't be, you know? He was on me, he used to be on, he used to be on each other, you know what I'm saying? Because me and him. We back to back with my boy, you know what I'm saying? Folks got shot, I said, hold on. I said, the streets, hold on. Who got shot? Who? Now my he a gangster. He, he got shot before. He a gangster. I said, folks ain't make it on front of my I play it out, you know me, you know you gotta play it out. You in jail, that's all type of goof ass niggas around. You know these niggas thirsty, these niggas. 
All of your business on King David, I walk it off. I walk it off. That's still in, huh? Now my homie from out west, I fuck some niggas out west, Willie D and them and uh, nigga Junior on four them. I fuck with them niggas hard, okay? That's the same gang. Now they see me, they, I'm just walking around in circles on the deck, you know? And they put their arm around me. When I'm like, damn, you good, bro? bro you good? What's wrong with you, boy? No. Yeah, I'm good. Ooh, they, what's wrong? You just got a farm, man. I'm, I'm good, you know? They what happened? I mean, they, they just killed T-Roy. Ooh, he what? They, I'm T-Roy. They just, they just killed T-Roy. Oh, I got to break it down on King Dave, that shit. I couldn't help it, they hug, they just hug me. These some real niggas, you see what I'm saying? We grown ass men. Folks grab me to hold me and shit. You get to there, you gonna be high, right, sweaty, you gonna be high, right, though. Oh, hold on, boy, that's my best friend, boy. Every time they just killed my best friend while I'm in jail. I'm in that bitch, gonna go crazy. Oh, I'm in that bitch, don't know what's going on. I'm in that bitch, in that. What the fuck is y'all? I'm in that bitch mad on. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm in that bitch getting that. Nah, not my best friend. You know what I'm saying? I'm in that bitch getting that. The big get got. And a, a lot of hope for a lot of niggas because he be. Y'all know how folks see his man. Niggas know T Royal. Oh, niggas know T Royal. Oh, let me see who hold up. The guys know the guys is looking like, ooh, this nigga preaching on. Oh. No chip, you know? Y'all know this shit, this, 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 that street shit. The street niggas watching me like, damn, this nigga talk about some shit. I know, yeah, it's the street shit. Y'all better pay attention, I ain't gonna keep doing it. But this shit, this shit don't supposed to be for free. I'm letting this shit go for free tonight, on. oh, yeah. Yeah, that shit fucked me up, though. You in that jam. You in that jam. And hey, this was crazy. Hey, nah, 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 you know, I, I, nah, nigga Melly, I ain't on no distance shit, R.I.P. Melly, whatever, from the Ops. Now, he one of them niggas you could talk to, you know what I'm saying? You could talk to him, because he, he cool, uh, and he got a little points, whatever he did, you know? So, it's, 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 it's okay. But look, now, he tell me, now, I, I, I hired the nigga and shit, and then y'all made did, though, he did right now. But like, he tell me that's when he's alive. He like, I knew you was gonna get out shorty. You lost your best friend. God had to let you out. You see what I'm saying? Like, God, he owes you that. I said, that's some real shit for a bitch ass, op ass nigga to say, okay, baby? But he told me, like, yo. He said, yeah, see, I said, I knew you was gonna. I said, yeah, that didn't kill my man. I couldn't believe that. Fuck it, 30 days, 30 nights. Fuck it on King Davis, busting on King Davis, they ain't that one up. Y'all tripping. The first thing King Von did when he got released in 2017 was to visit his family and his friends. And the first thing he said to Duke, E Dog, and the others from Get Back Gang, who already had dropped seven bodies after the death of D Roy, was, I love all of you. Get Back Gang had been really going crazy after the death of D Roy and weren't really planning on stopping. King Von was especially happy that Get Back Gang got TB out of the way. If they had not managed to kill TB before King Von came out, it would not have surprised me if King Von would have done it himself. One event that I intend to tell before I get to the more famous part of King Von's life, is that just a few months after King Von was released, he and some other members of a block got into a fight with STL slash EBT members. In the fight, King Von is said to have knocked out Wooski from STL according to Ocho Mana from a block. You can watch his YouTube channel where he tells the whole story. Now we come to the more famous part of King Von's story, his second career you could say, namely his life as an artist and rapper. When King Von came out in December 2017, he did not really know what to do. He borrowed money from his close friend Lil Dirk, who had taken care of him during his entire stay in prison. And even though he had just come out of prison, I can almost guarantee you that he still slid on his enemies and let of shots. However, in the end it did not work out anymore. King Von could not afford to screw up one more time. He had to do something to get money. At first he started selling drugs, but he could not do it as he did not like being around drug addicts, and also could not expose himself to the great risk of being set up and killed. 
King Von therefore decided to try rap with the help of Lil Durk and Buka from 600. King Von made his first song together with the chief of DHF 46, Bezu, who also beat a murder case a few days after Von beat his. The song they did was aptly named, Beat That Body. King Von's first line in that song really set the tone for what kind of artist King Von would become, and what kind of music he would make, where the lyrics would be at the center with stories from his past. Aw oh boy, what the F I'm known for, caught a body, beat that body, catch some more. Just a few weeks after Duke and Muwap, on King Von's command, allegedly killed Can't Get Right from STL slash EBT in The Innocent Bystander on June 15, 2018, King Von released his first music video and single, Problems. This whole song was basically a message to their enemies, but also a presentation of himself. He started the song by giving a shout out to Get Back Gang. Then he subtly mocked Can't Get Right who was recently killed by saying, Headshots if you ducking down, then we shoot at the fucking ground, see, folks gonna be killing shit, wipe the target and the witnesses, and followed up that line by saying, killing people is a hobby to me. King Von really showed here, just like in his first song, what kind of music he will make, it will be disrespectful and unfiltered. If you have not noticed it before, I say it now, in the chorus when King Von says, they catching bodies for me, Duke, E-Dog and Moo Wop were filmed in each sequence. On October 18th, 2018, just four days before Wooski from STL slash EBT got shot in the head at Dusky's funeral, allegedly by DQ from a block, King Von released another single and music video called, War With Us, which was filmed in a block. In the song, King Von mocked both Tuka and KI from STL slash EBT. However, two months later, King Von's life would change forever, on December 11th, 2018, King Von released the single and music video called Crazy Story. It was from this song that King Von got his big break and basically created a whole movement of memes and mockery about his enemies on 63rd and St. Lawrence through the famous line, We Not From 63rd. This song really showed what talent King Von had to make a song where he tells a whole story, and that really contains everything a story should contain, namely an introduction, a description of the environment, an event and a problem that arises in an end. Although King Von rapped for six months, he showed an incredible talent for music, it is not easy to make a song about an interesting story in two minutes that basically feels like a whole movie, and which also entertains the audience so much. King Von also got a lot of attention through his friend Lil Durk, who took him to the Breakfast Club interview, but also by sharing his music on social media and Lil Durk's fan base immediately became attached to King Von's aggressive music style. Unfortunately, King Von only managed to release two more songs before he would get into trouble again. On May 4, 2019, King Von was arrested yet again, this time for attempted murder and possession of firearm by convicted felon. King Von was arrested on a block, and was held in Cook County before being transferred to Fulton County, Georgia on May 17. Thirteen days later, Lil Durk handed himself in when he found out that there was a warrant out on him, and was charged with the same thing. However, the first to be charged with the attempted murder was DHF Bezu, who was arrested only 22 days after the incident. The incident for which the three people were arrested for took place on February 5th. 2019 in Atlanta, Georgia. There are various stories about what actually happened that night. The first report that came out says that King Von, Lil Durk, THF Bezu and Halibans, who sadly was murdered before he could face charges, found themselves in a parking lot outside the Varsity restaurant in Midtown Atlanta. 
According to news sites, King Von, Lil Durk and Bezu shot a man named Alexander multiple times, and also robbed him of $30,000. Investigators say that 18 rounds were fired, and shells were collected from a rifle and pistols. Alexander, who got shot, also had a semi-automatic pistol during the struggle, and dropped it while running away. According to police, Dirk was seen on camera firing shots from a car, and King Von was seen on foot, running and firing shots at the victim. Alexander was rushed to the hospital in critical condition but luckily, he survived. That's how a freaked up girl and Vaughn. Free them niggas though. I'd rather them dead than in jail, bitch. Them niggas idiots, bro. Hey, Been swinging in the chair like he has no worries, bro. Uh, it's a video out? Yes. Yeah, Even that bitch swinging in the chair, he has no worries, bro. Don't be probably scared, but Vaughn, he was in that bitch. I've been in jail before. I know how to fight. You hear me? New talk. <laughs> Hell no, on King David. Witnesses to the incidents in Atlanta say that Lil Dirk, King Von and the rest sped away in a vehicle with a large 300 on the side of it. The entire incident was also recorded by multiple nearby surveillance cameras. Dirk and his legal team are saying that Dirk, Von and Zoo acted in self-defense, and say that Alexander was actually the one who started the quarrel, and who was the one who tried to rob Von. Dirk and Zoo from the beginning. I do not know if that is how it happened, however, Alexander uploaded a picture on Instagram after coming out of the hospital, where he was sitting in a jeep with a caption that said, I nearly died to get one of these. On the day this happened, Lil Dirk was driving around in his jeep with the 300 logo on the side. Alexander is rumored to be a known scammer from Chicago, and is said to be a vice lord from the east side of Chicago. Whether Lil Dirk, Von and Zoo knew him before the incident is unknown. After King Von had been held in county for nearly two months, the judge finally granted a $300,000 bond for King Von, and a $250,000 bond for Lil Dirk. After a pastor testified in court and gave Lil Dirk a good word, and they both were released from Fulton County, Georgia. However, they both were released on conditions they needed to follow to stay out of jail. Both were put on house arrest with an ankle monitor. They were not allowed to be around each other and could not under any circumstances be around weapons. How this case actually ends is very uncertain. Some say that Lil Dirk will be completely released while others say that he will be imprisoned for a few years.
Personally, I think the evidence is on Lil Durk's side, and that he will beat the case. I think that because they literally have a video of Lil Durk and King Von shooting Alexander, and despite that, both are released on bond, and it makes me wonder how strong the prosecution's case actually is. In addition, a weapon was found at the crime scene that belonged to Alexander. It is also very unclear when the trail starts, I think it will take at least another year before it starts. We out here. We out here. Yo, bro. I'm getting fired up for your apartment. They talking 15 minutes. I'm still gonna fuck me 30. I'm still there. You tired? Mm-hmm. Oh, we were still waiting on the drive when it comes up. Just hop in. Just hop in. We waiting on the drive. Hey, tell me. Hey, you can just stay right here. Yeah, another car is about to pull up. Yeah, definitely appreciate everybody for rocking out with us, supporting us, believing us, you know? Free. I've been so long, this Instagram feel fake. Vaughn will be home tomorrow. Yeah, I missed this shit right here. Every day we at it. What was positive about King Von's stay in prison, was that he wrote several songs that would later become many of his most famous songs. Among others, he wrote his perhaps most famous song, Took Her to the O, which at the time of writing has over 77 million views on YouTube. However, on September 3, 2019, just under two months after he bonded out, he got arrested yet again. This time for aggravated battery. King Von allegedly beat up a guy in the studio for calling Asian doll a bitch. King Von was always close to violence, he beat up people many times even though he was out on bond. For example, when King Von recorded the music video for Armed and Dangerous, they took a picture after the recording, behind King Von there is a guy throwing a basketball and that basketball hit King Von, which resulted in King Von beating him up. It did not take much for Von to resort to violence. His head was always on a swivel and he was always on the go. I should have my hair like this. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody called my girlfriend a bitch yesterday. And you ain't gonna smack one of them niggas for my ass. Tell him what happened to my hand, bro. Folks, over beat his ass. Call my girlfriend Folks, a bitch. Woke back up. All type shit. I look for a little white white, bro. King Von was in prison for about a month before he got bonded out yet again. While King Von was in prison, he released his first mixtape, Grandson Volume 1. This mixtape did get a lot of attention despite being his first mixtape. King Von's rap career was basically a straight upward curve towards becoming a star. After each song he released he got more and more views and attention worldwide. He dropped songs like Took Her to the O, 2 a.m. and released on March 6, 2020, his first album called Levon James. The point of this video is not to go through all of King Von's songs, but I would like to tell you why I think King Von became so big, in such a short time that he actually became. First of all, his street credibility, which is pretty obvious, but there is a lot of upcoming rappers who have street credibility, for example, no Limit Wet M Up who recently beat a quadruple murder charge. Von had something extra, he had the personality to become a superstar, 
And what made his music so interesting was that you knew that what he said in his songs was probably true, and he hinted about things he allegedly did in the streets, that other people only speculated about before. For example, the song Wait, which is basically a confession for the murder of K.I. There was always something exciting about Vaughn's music, one always found out something one did not know before, and he mentioned his homies for doing dirt in the streets, for example when he has mentioned Duke and Moo Wop several times for being killers. That together with his aggressive and storytelling music made his music something completely unique. Lil Dirk described it perfectly, when he said that King Vaughn's music was like Chief Keef's music in 2012, but on steroids. Another big part that played a big role in King Von's huge popularity was his behavior on social media. King Von was an incredibly funny guy on social media, he interacted with fans, roasted people all over the place, and trolled extremely much on Twitter and Instagram. King Von said himself in the interview with academics that he loves social media, but that you shouldn't take anything he writes or says seriously. Much of the trolling was against his enemies, as I said before. King Von created a whole movement of memes towards his enemies. People who have no idea of what 63rd even is are saying we're not from 63rd. He made interviews where he basically described Parkway Gardens as an amusement park, and 63rd as a dirty place where they steal things. If you like, like you, your relationship with him, like your friendship with him, just yeah, yeah, Melly, me, me like this, this is my boy. Like, yeah, I love Melly, that's my homie, uh, God, uh, shit. Um, they want to know if you do a feature with Modell, P5, Malcolm. You know them? Nah. All right, never mind. There, we already. He already told us about Tuka. He said Tuka, one of his favorites to work with. Right, they yeah. want to know about the Gleesh Place video. Oh, Gleesh Place coming soon. And I do a piece with all of them. Tell them just send them money. Yeah, we need that bag. 100 oh, racks. Bag. 100 racks of feet. Oh, do they got it? <laughs> <laughs> My boy charging 100 racks. Don't get me started on this bitch. I'll be sick. Y'all don't know me. Y'all don't know me. I'll be sick on this bitch. <laughs> Say the name so we do the pictures again. Uh. He'd have to scroll up. I can't even see hey, that shit. Hey, y'all, uh, listen to the names he said. One of the pieces. We'll we'll get a clip of it. And we'll take we'll send it to you. Um, All right, send me names. Listen to the names. Say one of the pieces. Um, they want to know if you'd ever do a song with Young and Ace, Jada Youngin, or and K. I don't know who that K are. No, say the other names you said. You gotta scroll up so I can read that. Can you do that for me? Hold on. It was. Now scroll up a little more, a little more. If you do a feature with Modell, Tyreek, P5, or Malcolm. Build a fuck. <laughs> look out, folks, look out. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, that's a no, right? I'm assuming that's a no. Hey, folks, I'm talking fuck you on some police shit. <laughs> I don't even, who are those, I, I don't, am I supposed to know who they are? Man, them people is there, you bogus. No, I'm just playing. What's up, let's go to the next question. No, that's crazy, they have me violated like that. You listen to that, and you with that shit, fuck 63rd. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> they have me violated. Yo! Oh, go ahead, I, I, you don't see no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 All right, so look, my question for the day is, what is your message to your first body? Fuck Tuka, let me get it now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that white man, GDK, man. Fuck Tuka, man. Fuck Zika, man. Fuck Rocky, 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 man. Fuck Doing Tisha asked me what I want to be. I told her she think I'm talking about some stuff and curves. Man, niggas better hurry, hurry. I'm throwing hell mirrors. You catch this, you getting buried. Smoking on that Terry Berry. They left a bloody Mary. Yeah, well, Pull up, bro.
Something that King Von also had was a big ego and a quite sociopathic behavior. Something that would also eventually get him killed. Don't get me wrong, King Von was also a very caring guy with a huge heart, both for better and for worse. He looked after his people around him, he made sure his family and everyone around him was well, and really brought a block, Lamron, 600 and THF 46 together as one. King Von was basically worshipped by the BDs on the south side. However, Von had a dark side, he really seemed to like to brag about how much he has done on the streets, in several songs and social media posts he hinted about his body count, that he was the toughest and most gangster rapper in the industry, which I personally think he actually was. But one thing he forgot was that other people are also capable of pulling a trigger, he was not untouchable which he seemed to think he was. However, you need to understand where he's coming from. King Von is not a rapper, he has literally spent four times more of his life in jail than he had in the rap game. He's gotten away with more than seven murders and a dozen assassination attempts and shootings, because of all that it's very easy to think you're the toughest of all these industry rappers, that talk about murders and shooting but have never actually lived that type of life. King Von was really about that life, he was one of the most feared members from a block, and it is just a coincidence that he did not get over 100 years in prison already as a 23 year old. Instead, he came out became a rapper, made millions and became one of the most popular rappers from Chicago, and in the United States as a whole, and paid a way for his other people from his block to do the same. But unfortunately, as you already know, King Von's life would tragically come to an end, just days after releasing his latest album Welcome to a Block. Mama, mama, grandma, goddamn. Fuck y'all, we Suck outside. Suck my sister dick. Fuck you guys, we outside. Bitch, I just body into a town. Man, man, bitch. Folks golden, bitch. And I got a lot of money. That bogus. Folks golden, bitch. Hell no, you ain't. Folks golden, bitch. Shut them, I got a lot, BJ. They know. <laughs> they know. Y'all know what I'm going. No bout. I'm not supposed to get busy, don't you? Just free, how many I think? Gotta be stopped there. Nah, he gave me. Hey, look. I mean, what y'all think? What y'all think this has all cap? More than a crime. What y'all think this has all cap? What if I? Maybe cap. I'll take it out. Yeah. I'll take it to that. Oh, yeah, it's all shit. Oh, more than five. Oh, more than five. My brother saying numbers and shit. <laughs> they put numbers up there. <laughs> <laughs> they put numbers up there. No, I'm just playing, man. He's trying to stop me. I really talk shit. No. Hey, y'all, y'all. Y'all off that, man, man, that, man, that man, scary man. shit, y'all. Hey. Uh -uh. Y'all getting scary. Stop being, stop being so scary. <laughs> there you go. Get out. I'll be there. I'm what is going on, man? What's up, man? We've been going in this bitch like five shots to the face. Huh? We'll check it. Right here, what's up? I only got cash up, and that nigga Mike, he only got his credit card. They told me we got to pay 10 to park over there. All right, where that park at? 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Huh. Give him a hundred. Fuck it. Tell him to leave Songs where King Von have hinted about his body count. Asian Doll, Pull Up. Featuring King Von. If I catch three more, I'm double digits. King Von, Demon. Talking about bodies, I got a few. Four plus three, three plus two. King Von, wait, unreleased. Body count so ugly, I remind of that scream dude. Buka 600, okay, okay, okay. Featuring King Von and Lil Dirk. Body count is so ugly, still handsome. King Von, bless the booth, freestyle, let's talk bodies, I got several, because I got seven. Simex Santana, 
for a fact, featuring King Von. Killed some people, I'll do it again. Just be happy that you was not them. Now we come to the part of the story, that one never hoped to write, about King Von, or about any other rapper or gang member for that matter. On November 6th, 2020, King Von's life tragically came to an end. Just like I said before, King Von had just released his latest album, Welcome to a Block. A few hours earlier before it all went down, King Von was celebrating his album release at Opium Nightclub in Atlanta. After the celebration at the nightclub he was supposed to go back to his Airbnb but instead, for some reason, he changed his mind on the way to the Airbnb, and decided to go to the Monaco Hookah Lounge on Trinity Avenue, which is approximately 10 minutes away from the nightclub he was previously at. As I have already told, King Von was not allowed to carry a weapon because of his case he had with Lil Durk, however, he had both security and friends around him who carried weapons, there are many around King Von who have said that he was not himself that night. If he had taken drugs is unknown, but he at least drank alcohol in the club he was in before. When he decided to go to the Monaco Hookah Lounge, he didn't notify his security, and went there alone in a car with one other driver and another car with friends. When King Von arrived at the location, he waited in his car for about 30 minutes, and his security finally got word of his new location and immediately rushed to the hookah lounge. This bitch, man, I see everybody in this bitch. Y'all act like y'all don't see a motherfucker. But I see a motherfucker in this bitch, stretch gang. I see you got that fuck 63rd shirt back there, my nigga. What's up? This is no, I got get back game. Oh, no, this nigga, this nigga got the get back game. I love it, I love you, guys. Hey, you know, it's all love for this bitch. We gonna tee up shit up. I done dropped that one on that welcome to Roblox. That bitch going crazy. Oh, I wanna thank everybody. You know what the fuck going on. Stress game. Oh, there's a lot of bad holes in here. I've been walking through a van. This decent shit in this bitch, you know? You know, we trying to party and have fun in this bitch. I ain't gonna lie. We got the little bougie. They acting bougie right here. They right here. Yeah, I better stop that, man. So we gonna tee up. Another person who was also at the scene was the Atlanta-based rapper Quan Dorondo, together with his brother Lil Tim, who were both friends with the rapper NBA Youngboy. It's no secret that King Von and his camp and Youngboy's camp were not cordial with each other before it all went down. For a long time there had been subtle insults between the groups. King Von and Youngboy also shared the same interest in girls, once King Von and Asian Doll broke up. King Von started dating Young Boy's baby mother called Jania, and Young Boy made a song together with Asian Doll. However, when King Von was new in the rap game, he was actually cool with Quando Rondo, and even made him say fuck 63rd, and other disrespectful things towards his enemies. Many rappers in the industry looked up to King Von, and was pretty much scared of him. Almost every industry rapper is dick riding the BDs from the south side, and is mocking their dead enemies to get confirmation from people like Lil Durk, Lil Reese, King Von and Chief Keef. Another thing many people have talked about is the video where King Von mocked Young Boy for lying in his songs. It was a joke. It was not serious from King Von's side. I don't know how Young Boy took it but I think they were somewhat cordial at that point. After Von got out in late 2017 he even said that he liked Young Boy's music and have in multiple live streams listened to his music. Lil Durk even made a song with Young Boy in late 2017. Fuck Young Boy talking about on this song, bro. What? You talking crazy on this one. Oh yeah? He ain't even like that. Oh! On his ass, nah. On his ass. On his cap. You got cap in your raps. Bro, street boss, don't hit the white lady. You got cap in your hey. raps. Park right here, stop, stop, right, stop. Right, right, no, right. no, no, no. We presidential right. park. Clean up this man. Let's go, man. A nigga on 64, y'all 63 niggas over there smoking crack and shit. <laughs> 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 Yo, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. Yo, I'm gonna get the
going on. I'm talking about the Cooper man. I'm talking about the Castillo. Hey, listen, little man, a nigga on 64, we all 63 niggas over there smoking crack and shit. However, one thing that may have led up to this, is the beef Lil Reese seemed to have with Quando Rondo. In August 2020, Lil Reese posted a tweet saying, I ain't going to lie, when I catch Quando Rondo again, I want to see all that tough shit about, and that he was going to beat him up. Quando Rondo responded to him that Lil Reese won't do anything to him. Again, this may be one of the reasons that led to King Von walking up to Quando that night. But I think there is much more that we do not know about this situation. There have probably been more things happening between the gangs at nightclubs around Atlanta that we do not know about, and that was the reason why King Von, on site, walked up to Quando Rondo. I also want to put an end to a couple of rumors. Young Boy and King Von's issues they had with their girls had nothing to do with this. This was between Quando Rondo's camp and King Von's camp. Also, I cannot believe that I have to say this, but Lil Dirk did not sacrifice King Von, and King Von's manager did not set him up. You must be delusional to believe these absurd theories. Anyways, back to the parking lot. King Von was sitting in his car with around 20 of his friends surrounding it. About 15 meters away, stands Quando Rondo outside his car that his brother Lultim is sitting in. On the surveillance camera, you see that Quando says something to Lultim, what he is actually saying is unknown. But it may actually have been the case that Quando warned him that something could happen, and that he must then be prepared to help him. Someone or some, from King Von's gang sees Quando Rondo, and tells King Von that he is only a few meters away. Immediately, King Von jumps out of his car, walks forward with a sweeping look across the parking lot to see where Quando Rondo is, only after a few seconds he sees him, and walks towards him. Rondo also sees him but moves a little insecure towards him as if he wants to talk to Von. However, King Von being the type of guy he was, he did not want to talk. King Von walked straight forward to him and started beating him up. More and more people from King Von's gang jumped into the fight to beat Quando Rondo. It was at that point that Quando Rondo's brother, Lultem, hopped out of the car and shot King Von four times in his back. King Von could not see it coming. Von immediately collapsed on the street and got a death grip on Quando Rondo, and used him as a human shield. In the same second, D. Roy and HK's brother, Slutty, from a block, shoot him in the leg, but when it was time to finish him, his gun jammed. There were also two off-duty cops on site. When they heard the shots ring off and when they saw Slutty shoot him, they immediately returned fire. The first couple of shots missed, and Slutty, BJ, Boss Top and Louie started running, without knowing where the shots came from. Slutty and Louie ran towards the cops who immediately started letting off shots, hitting both Slutty and Louie in the head. Slutty was killed on the spot and Louie was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Both BJ from a block and King Vaughn's manager got shot in the leg. Love the game. I love you, Louie. You're going to fight through. See, Louie, tell me you're going to bounce back. Move your hand. Tell me you're going to bounce back. You know, tell me you're going to bounce back. Yeah. Once Quando Rondo understood that King Von was shot, he started yelling that King Von was shot. The story about him trying to take his chain is not true, and I do not even think Von had jewelry on him. I actually think he was trying to help Von. However, King Von still had a strong grip on Quando Rondo, because Tim was still laying on the ground behind him with a gun in his hand. One man that left King Von was Muwap from a block. 
even though Muwap was unarmed, and despite King Von's killer still lying on the ground with the weapon in his hand, Muwap approached Quando Rondo and knocked him out twice to get him off Von. Once he got him off Von, a black vehicle pulled up, and they put Von in the back seat and sped off to the hospital which was only a few minutes away. Tim was also taken to the hospital, and the fact is that they were both taken to the same hospital, and it was actually about to be a shootout there as well. Quando Rondo understood that, and that was why he took out his mobile phone and started livestream on Instagram, as a way so that no one would attack him. On Saturday, Atlanta police announced the arrest of Timothy Leakes on one count of felony murder and the death of King Vaughn. At the time, he was still receiving treatment while in custody at Grady Memorial Hospital. King Vaughn was, after several operations in an attempt to save his life, tragically pronounced dead in the hospital. Rest in peace. Luckily, Louis survived the shot to his head and is currently in rehab. Come on, come on, come on, he's shot! Come on, come on, bit boy, you got this shit, dog. Come on, cuz just keep breathing, bit boy. Come on. Just keep breathing, cuz. Come on. Hold on, you come can't on, move on. on that thing. You got bro. it, my fault, my fault. Yeah. Ma'am, he's shot. What you mean, wrong side? Come on. Come on. Come on, ma'am, please. Come on, all right. Okay. Get him. Get him a wheelchair. Man, what you mean I gotta stay right here? Yeah, okay. Man, we need to get him. Man, we need to get him back there ASAP. I'm calling. 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 I'm Man, let me hold the phone. Please. It's 8757. 8757. Man, we need a wheelchair. Man, just call. I can't do all the work I can do. Hey, They coming, they coming. They got some from the Lord. That's man. Now, yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, I didn't go right to the emergency room. Ma'am, how we get there, ma'am? We need help. Tempo, son, that's how I got to come back. Y'all got some gloves? Hold on, ma'am, man. Get him a wheelchair, ma'am. What we doing? What y'all doing, cuz? Ma'am, what you mean? Ma'am, we can't take him out, man. That man gonna die. The fuck? Walk around. To the emergency room. Man, how we, can you show us? I did that when I'm like, just walk straight down. Now we need help, ma'am. They call us, sir. You got to call us, sir. Don't go to the back. You can't be trying to get that stuff. You can't be trying to get that stuff. Now we. Man, fuck. King Von will forever be remembered as a man with a huge heart. He loved his fans, his friends and his family. He did everything to make the others around him to be good. If he had something, his friends and family would have it too, that was his mentality. He took care of his family and since Von owned his masters, he will continue to take care of them. King Von will of course also be remembered for everything he did in the streets, because it was a big part of his life, he will be remembered as a hood legend by his friends in his block. His name will live on forever and his legacy will continue. Many have speculated about King Von's last words. Some have said it was don't panic, while others have said it was, tell Dirk and the fans that I love them, oh block forever.
Thank you for watching the video. Comment on what you thought of it. Rest in peace to the people whose lives were taken in the gang wars.